Hi, welcome back. This is a, another edition of That Mill Podcast. Um, this show's been obviously recorded before the Gillingham game, which is being played later on today. Um, right, and uh, without further ado, we will introduce you to the panel on today's show. I am joined by the one and only Stephen. Hello, fella. Hello, Mickey. You right? Yes, mate. I'm all good. I'm all good. I'm all good. And also, we are joined by Dan. How you doing, fella? You all right? Yeah, evening, chaps. It's uh, it's good to be going back to some football finally. Yes, absolutely agree with that one, fella. Absolutely agree with that one. So then, what you got in store for today's episode? We're going to be talking about James Berrison. Obviously, the news broke today that he is our new chairman. We're going to be talking about the new kit. We're going to be talking about lack of signings. Should we be worried yet? And also, we're going to be talking about ticket prices this year for away games coming up. Don't go anywhere. We'll be straight back after this. So then, gents, good evening, good afternoon, good morning. Um, news broke today then, obviously, of um, our new chairman, James Berylson, obviously, um, John's uh, son. Let's just read the statement and then I'll, um, I'll take your um, thoughts and, and views on that. So today there was a statement um, made by uh, the club, um, on behalf of either James Berylson or James Berylson um, press statement. It says, to our Millwall family, I would like to start by saying on behalf of the Berylson family, an enormous and very heartfelt thank you to everyone for the outpouring of love and affection for Dad following the tragic events of last week. This remains a very challenging time for us, but the many thousands of messages of support we received from our Millwall family has been a source of tremendous comfort. We are immensely grateful for the photos and video tributes from the Dem and those who took the time to go there or sign the online book of condolence. Your collective support means more than I can possibly begin to articulate. As we all know, Dad had a deep and infectious love for Millwall. He cared passionately about the players, staff, management and most importantly, our supporters. It is a love that spread throughout the Berylson family and Millwall has become a huge part of our lives for so long now. I have witnessed incredible moments of joy, drama and success at the Den alongside my dad. And these memories will last a lifetime. From the day forward, from this day forward, though it is, it, sorry, let me start again. From this day forward, though, it is about creating new ones. John Berylson, our, cha our chairman, had dreams for this club. He had a vision and a plan. And I am fiercely determined and passionate about continuing his work and building on this foundation. It is with sincere and immeasurable pride that I take on the chairmanship of this great football club. It is what my dad wanted. And I am thankful for his, mentor, his mentorship, his mentorship. I joined the board of directors in 2010 and blessed by his trust and faith in me. I am also grateful to my Millwall colleagues for their support in recent days, but also more broadly, the advice and guidance they have provided me over the years. We will pay tribute to Dad at the Bristol City game, our first home league match of the season on Saturday the 12th of August. I hope all of you can join my family for this very emotional occasion. This will mark the start of a new era, one in which we will strive to fulfil Dad's legacy. We are Millwall. We are family. James Berylson. Um, I think it was a lovely statement. I think it was a lovely um, thing to put out considering um, how hard it's probably been for the Berylson family over the last week. Um, and I think it's something what was probably needed to just give Millwall fans a little bit of reassurance um, that pretty much uh, it's full sail ahead um, and it's business as normal. I think so. I think take of look. First of all, obviously, you know, the last couple of weeks have been very, very challenging for his family, for us as fans. You know, it, it was a huge shock. You know, we've, I'm sure, there's been many conversations that have, have been had, and it is, it, it's, it's a very, very sad um, time. But I think it was important to for him to come out and. And as you say, give that kind of reassurance, because whilst we all know that the priority is obviously John and his family, you know, you know that 
everyone they've lost they've lost a dad they've lost a, a, a husband and, and you know it's it's tricky but fans would have been worried about where, what was going to happen to the club and signings especially slap bang in the middle of a transfer window so i think it was a really good statement i think it it showed intent it showed that that john had planned for the future uh, maybe not so much right now but he'd planned in the future that his son would would carry on the the, the legacy and and i think if anything you know, I'd put that up in the changing room, in the home drain, changing room, bring it to away games and go, right, for John, for John's legacy. Very good statement. This, for me personally, and I'm sure all of us and all the supporters are, are 100% behind James Berylson. And I think that's that can only be a good thing for us as a club. Yeah, I mean, there is, there's been a good, um, I think it's been taken as a, a really good way. Um, there seems to be a lot of fans who read that statement and sort of put, lumps in people's throats some people have said obviously it brought tears to their eyes etc etc um it 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 wasn't a normal pr written um no. statement was it? it it felt as if there was something there from the heart and it felt as if actually um yeah you're part of us and we look after you the same way your dad looked after us basically well that's the way i you know, I took it on. Um, Dan, what's your thoughts on that? It certainly brought a lump to my throat when I uh, read that statement on, on the train this morning. Um, you know, obviously learning from his dad, you know, what kind of better mentor is there? But, you know, reading them words, it just sounds like he gets it. He gets us, which is, you know, the most important thing for a football club chairman. And he's going to be surrounded by, you know, people that have worked at the club for a while. You know, obviously I know... Um, Steve Kavanagh kind of gets his fair share of criticism on the fan base, but he's worked with John now for such a long time. So hopefully, you know, that'll be something that we might see, you know, he can kind of help James take them steps. Obviously, James has been on the board as well for such a long time. Um, but, you know, as Stephen said, that you know, this is now for John's legacy. You know, we fell just short last season. We all, uh, most of us, I think, have seen the Hutch thing about, you know, having that cigar in his pocket and didn't quite, you know, have the chance to use it on the final day against Blackburn. Well, if there's a season to go out and, you know, possibly make history for this football club, I, I think this is the season. Do it for John. Yeah, no, I think I think we're probably going to have a lot of, you know, John's legacy and stuff like that. And I think, you know, there's loads of talk across social media about, you know, how do we do, you know, what do we do to you know, um, immortalise John at the Den is probably the right word. Do we name a stadium? Do we do a statue? Do we rename a road? Do we rename this? Do we rename that? You know, do we do this? Do we do that? Right now, I would say um, we're speaking to people at the club. They have they have their ideas and they're going to fully look into those and they're going to um, definitely communicate, you know, ideas and stuff what the family have thought of and stuff like that, I think, at a later point in time. Um, but right now, I think they're just more worried about, um, the, you know, what goes on on the pitch, what goes on at the, the club, and and pretty much get themselves ready for the start of the season. So, you know, I think it's um, it's great to see everybody with ideas and everything else. But I think, you know, when it's when it's right, I think Mill will, will let us know when it's right. Uh, and they will no doubt communicate those ideas and those suggestions um, and then go from there. But, uh, you know, uh, in conversations I've had with people, I think they, they've got a hell of a lot of ideas what they want to look at do. Looking forward to the 12th um, of August, I think that will be a very emotional game. Um, and I think what we can do as fans is, is just, you know, give our full support to, to James and, um, in this truly horrific time and um, and just really support him in his way forward and obviously the proof's in the pudding. So, you know, if he suddenly brings Messi and Ronaldo and stuff here, then, um, yeah, we we absolutely adore him and he'll be, a, you know, he'll be a legend in, uh, in, in Block 18. So, yeah, definitely. You, you get what I mean from that, don't you? I think that the, the big thing is really what you say there, that the club and the fans know how much John meant to the club and meant to the supporters and meant to everybody. And we all know that they will do something that that's going to yeah. happen. And whatever that may be, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure we've all got our own, our own suggestions, our own ideas, but that will happen. And I would imagine that James 
himself is probably thinking, yeah, we'll, you know, we, we will have. But he knows that he has a job to do. And as hard as it sometimes might, might be, you know, he is, he is taken over from from his dad. And it is about, you know, we're a month away from, from the season. And he knows that, you know, that we need to be, we need to be ready for that. The 12th of August, I agree, is going to be, is going to be a, a very emotional, um, a different type of emotion at the den. You know, we get the big game feel, the first game of the season, the big crowds, and it, it you know, the atmosphere is electric. We've all spoke about it. We've all been in it, but I don't think this one is going to be the same. I think it's going to be very, very different and rightfully so. Um, because I think John does deserve the, the send off that I believe he's going to get. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, um, it is full steam ahead. And I think the club will never forget John. And I don't think John would want us to be sidetracked from the fact that we are going into, into the championship season again. And, and we have got goals and ambitions and he'd want us to, to strive for those. No, hundred percent agree. I mean, John was never, um, you know, there was talk before this happened of, uh, you know, naming the training ground after him and he wouldn't have it. He was like, no, 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 no. I, I, I don't want that. You know, that's for, you know, past things or, or legends and this and that. And it, it wasn't something what he was interested in. So, you know, now obviously it's different, but, you know, it is that sort of, um, that genuine, you know, that genuine man. Um, yeah, I mean, John is a, a, a deep loss to each and every one of us, those of us who um, knew him personally and met him numerous amounts of times and, and, and spoken to him. And also those who've, never had the opportunity to actually meet him, you know, seen him from afar or, or just read content what he, he put out through the club. Um, I think the love for John is the same regardless of who we are. Um, as this last week is seen with some of the messages from people who've never spoken to him and some of the people who, you know, who have. Um, I would probably like to say, which, you know, as you said earlier, Dan, that, you know, Stay Karen does get... Um, you know, his fair share of abuse. And, and I'm not saying that a lot of the time it isn't deserved, but I would like to say thank you to him on behalf of um, Millwall fans and whatnot for being our representative um, on John's last journey. He went to the funeral and the burial um, and he, he passed on, you know, pictures and, and comments what he'd obviously taken at the den from fans and people who passed on their condolences. They were all passed on to the family. So, you know, um, I might not always see eye to eye to him, but, you know, thank you very much for going over there and representing the fan base um, over there. And, uh, yeah, look forward to the times ahead, I suppose. I think it's I think it's now um, it's now that look forward and continue John's legacy um, and finish something that he started. And let's get to the premiership. Don't worry about the playoffs. Let's just let's just go out and, and win it. Do you know what I mean? But I do think this season will be highly charged and emotional because I think a few clubs will probably do something for us when we go there, um, especially the beginning part of the season, um, just because I think that's what some of the clubs we're playing are, are like. So, yeah. Dan? Yeah, um, you know, obviously, yeah, that Bristol City game is going to be an emotional one. It's hundred percent going to be a sellout, um, you know, and I don't, I don't know, don't think there'll be too many almost dry, dry eyes um, in the ground, to be honest. Um, and I know, obviously, at Gillingham tomorrow, they've said that they're going to um, Neil Harris and Gary Rout are both going to lay wreaths um, in the centre circle, and the players are going to wear black armbands. So, yeah, you know, I think. It's going to be an emotional start to the season and we need to, you know, the players need to hopefully tune their emotions um, into motivation. You know, players that haven't even been at the club for very long, you know, um, Kevin Nisbet and Joe Bryan, they, even they spoke so highly of the chairman when the news broke um, and their messages in the book of condolence and coming out in the local press and the stuff in the week shows just how much everyone thought of him and, you know, what a fantastic representative he was of Millwall Football Club. So, you know, let's just hope James, even if he's, you know, half as good as what John was, we are still very lucky to have him, especially when you look in English football up and down the pyramid of what some owners are doing to some clubs. Mick, you're on mute, mate. I know that. 
I've done that on purpose just so you said it. Um, Stephen, you got right. anything you want to say um, before we move on to the next subject? I think. I, I'll be honest with you. The only thing I would say, I wouldn't be surprised if Middlesbrough do something. Obviously, they are the first game um, yeah. on the 5th of August. I would imagine that there will be a, a minute silence or applause or, or however they want to sort of dress that up and, and black armbands and things. And I think um, a lot of football clubs have, you know, have, have, you know, I know it's an easy thing to do perhaps, but they don't have to do it. And a lot of football clubs did send a message and, and some flowers and things like that. So I wouldn't be surprised if Middlesbrough follow suit as well. Yeah. Can I just say that I think a minute silence is a lot more better than a minute applause. I just, yeah, I've I'd never, agree. I've never, mm -hmm. I've never been a big fan with a minute applause. I think it sort of overshadows. It's, it's okay if it's if it's a minute applause, you know, like you know, seventy ninth minute or fifty five minute or something like that. But um, in what potentially it is, I would, I think a minute silence is uh, is a good. But I do understand how hard that is to. Um, facilitate uh especially within football because obviously you only need one rival fan to shout something and then it kicks off the other side and then all of a sudden the whole moment gets ended but pers yeah. personal personal view minute applause uh, yeah agreed. No thanks uh a minute silence is uh is always um yeah. would get my vote so yeah can I, I just add that. something quickly as well? Sorry, before we move on to the next topic. Uh, first of all, Stephen, on what you said about how many clubs left messages on social media, it wasn't just, you know, the club's social media pages. There was other football club owners that are on Twitter. I saw a tweet from Peterborough United's owner. He came out and said, I'm very mm. sorry to hear this. I met John so many times. He was a great person. And two, you know, obviously we're looking forwards. I've just looked back. James Berylson was appointed to the board of directors in 2010. Now, in the 0910 season, we got promoted. I don't know at what point whether he joined, whether it was that season or whether it ended up being the 10-11 season, where either way, we still had a fantastic season. I think that was our first season championship, finished ninth or 10th. So, you know, hopefully that might be a little bit of a good omen to kind of go into the season with. Yeah, and we're still keeping JB. So, you know, yeah. we, we're now got JB Junior. Um <laughs> You know, we had JB Senior, now we've got JB Junior. So, uh, yeah, on behalf of the pod uh, and on behalf of um, Millwall fans as a whole, uh, best of luck, James. Um, and, uh, yeah, you're, you know, I think you'll do your dad's legacy really, really proud. So, then, gents, let's move on. There were some other announcements today. Um, we might as well start with this one first because they've done it this way. Uh, they announced, obviously... Um, the rear of the shirt sponsor and the training ground sponsor. Uh, as far as I'm led to believe, um, there was never really uh, an agreement with Husky for the training. It was given to them um, as a as a, a free option, really, because they didn't have anyone at the time, and they gave it to them obviously for a year or so, and then they've now found a sponsor. So now um, the Wigit Group, I think that's right, um, uh, Reese. Has, uh, has now come on board and he is now the training wear uh, sponsor and the rear of the shirt sponsor. Um, I don't know what's happening to um, Mason Scaffolding, whether or not they're going to be sponsoring some other part of the kit or not, I don't know. We're waiting to see on that one. Um, new shirts got released or the new home shirt got released. Um, third year on the trot, we've got the kits correct this year nailed on um well the home shirt nailed on um what's your views on the shirt Stay um right, go on Dan. You, go on, Dan. you go first I, I, I don't mind it I, do, I don't think it is it i don't think it's as nice as last season um, I won't be buying it for like, you know, I haven't bought a shirt for ages, um, so I won't be buying it. But I, I don't think it's terrible. I think we could have ended up with um, a lot, lot worse. One thing I will say, though, you just touched on the sponsor. I personally, I don't like a, a back of shirt, like high up sponsor. I think top of the shirt on the back is where the player's name is meant to be. Um, but football is a money's game. Um, you know, if, if they want to give us some a, a nice sum of money to have their sponsor there, then you know, a way to say no. 
No, I totally agree. I mean, just before you come in, Stephen, I think we need to put a caveat in there that obviously um, we were meant to be with Hummel uh, this season. And um, this time last year, the shirts were all designed and um, ready and planned for this season. Unfortunately, uh, the company who we were with, the elite group, um, went into administration in October, November time, November. And unfortunately, um, they got onto ERA, uh, who become the new kits um, supplier. And I think the issue they had is that they had to use the sort of stock item as such and change it slightly because of the time scales to get shirts printed and, and out um, before the start of the season. So I think, in fairness, um, yes, the shirt isn't everyone's cup of tea and it does look very, very basic to a level, but I think in the time scale they had, I think it's probably a um, a, a good effort on all concerned. Um, how long the badge lasts, obviously, we, we've known from here in the past, will be something to, to look out for. Um, and maybe we run a sweepstake on it, but um, yeah, look, uh, is it my cup of tea? Not really, but I think considering what the clubs had to had to go through, um, the later part of last year with um, the Hubble or the Hummel contract basically disappearing in front of their eyes, uh, I think it's you know, you do with what you can, can't you? Um, and I think there'll be plenty of fans out there um, definitely purchasing the shirt. I think people will purchase it probably, um, you know, John's memory or, or, you know, for John or do, you know, I think there'll be a lot of shirts sold possibly this year. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, personally, my view on it, it's, it's not great. Um, but then again, I've never really been a, a shirt buying person um ever i have brought some shirts in the past what you know i liked and stuff but um i've never worn them to games i just keep them for uh keepsakes going forward so uh yeah Stephen, what's your views of the shirt fella i think firstly with a sponsor as dan said football's a money game you know you, you need to be getting sponsors on board the club need to be trying to find revenue streams so I agree that the sponsor at the top, I, I don't like it. I didn't like the the Mason scaffolding sponsor on, on last year's one. But again, it's it's what makes football tick. It's what keeps us going. So, you know, the club's got to do what they've got to do. It's great they've got one for the training um, because the training kit this year, obviously, with Husky not paying for it, which is fine. They they gave it to their main sponsor, but now they've got a paying sponsor. It's a, you know, it's, a, it's more money across the board. Um, with the shirt, I mean, I'm actually quite fortunate. My, I play six aside on a Monday and our kit is, or the colour that we we play in is dark blue. So I can get away with wearing a middle shirt. So if I do choose to get one, it's great. I can play in it. And um, as I say, I wouldn't wear it to games, you know, but I don't mind. I don't mind the kit. I think we could have had it a lot worse. If you look at, I think it's Barnsley's kit um, that, that they've come out with this year, which is probably the worst football shirt I've ever seen. Um, so it could have been a lot worse. I think a lot of people get caught up on the kits nowadays. And for a club like Millwall, all we want is just a blue shirt. We uh, The right blue, I will add, not just any blue, but we just want a nice blue kit. That's all we want. You know, maybe the 30, 30 years at the den, they could have put, you know, the den into it or something. But uh, I just... that fault. I think, I think the shirt's what we leaked are the shirts but i'm led to believe that there might be one what i've not looked mm. to get hold of and one what um might be i'm not guaranteeing on that and i don't know but through things what i've sort of been told led to believe that there might be there there, there might be something else in the um in the offerings and if i do come across it i'm not going to share that one so <laughs> yeah but it, it's just, I mean, it's a, it's a kit, isn't it? We know we're gonna the home kit's going to be blue. We know that it's going to have, you know, there's going to be a slight change year on year, but it's okay. I, I, I don't think it's it, it makes too much of a difference. I mean, it's more for those that say that maybe want to buy them and wear them to, to games and stuff, but um, it's all right. 
it's a blue shirt. It's the players that play in it. Uh, I think there's been a lot made of it. Don't get me wrong. I think there's been a lot made of it. And I, I've made more of it from the fact that we didn't know what was going on with Husky. We didn't know what was going on, obviously, the, the change from Hummel and Era. And now that's finally sorted. Great. We've got a kit. The only downside to it is that we've announced a brand new blue home shirt. And in our first friendly, after it's been announced, we play a team that play in blue. So we might not be able to wear it tomorrow um, at Gillingham. But other we than are, that... We are. The oh, we are. Said they are going to wear it. So I don't know whether that means Gillingham might wear one of their other shirts or whether... Because they play, they play in a light shade of blue. So we yeah, might uh, be able maybe. to scrape through. Maybe, maybe they're going to release an away kit. I just thought it was really funny that the day before we've announced a kit and we're playing a team that's playing in blue. But um, it's all right. It's a kit. Um, it's the players that play in it. And I'm sure we'll come on to a topic and the, potentially the players who we may need to see in it coming in and uh, and, and go from there. Well, that does. Yeah. Really, I'd like to ask you chaps a question. Would you like to maybe see us go back to the blue that we wore in... 2004 for example there's been a lot of talk on twitter that that people you know they kind of like that blue maybe more than the the dundee blue we've kind of had now for kind of the past almost 10 years i think we um obviously i say we in the group in our in the that little pod group whatsapp group we were talking about kits earlier this afternoon a few of us were posting some old ones and memories and stuff and that blue the ryman kit i think the live in norwegian kit the captain morgan kit they're the blues that i would like to see personally um as i said as i touched on earlier the right blue kit is is um is what we look for but you know uh, they've gone down a different route which is fine but if it was up to me i think i would go back to that that kind of blue that we had back in those days yeah no i, I it's there's an ongoing debate with that in there you see you you've got a lot of the fan base that says oh no dundee blue stay stay with dundee blue and then there's a lot will go no no we need royal blue royal blue is what we want um and, and there's a there's a, a split between it but no we were we got a few things lined up regarding kits obviously where we were discussing today things i've been thinking about for a while and then all of a sudden today we we sort of tried some of the ideas out today on the group and there was good reaction so um yeah we, we've got a, a a few things um planned on a you know a couple of live shows on uh definitely on uh youtube um that would be great for for interaction and also um some other bits and pieces uh lined up for the new season so uh yeah definitely if you're not already following us make sure you follow us make sure you subscribe um and uh yeah get ready to uh get ready to buckle yourself in because um yeah this season um we're coming out strong so uh yeah it's it's all good um when do you think they're going to release the rest of the kits? That's that's mine. Um, possibly we'll get another one before Tuesday because we've got Sutton away maybe. We might get to see the away shirt. I don't think it'll be too long now. Now they've announced the home one. Uh, again, the time frame between now and the, and the start of the season is is diminishing quite quickly. So they're going to have to, you know, they're going to have to get them out at some point. So I, I would imagine at least by... Who, 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 it's Gillingham, then Sutton, and who's in it? Charlton, then Fortuna. Perhaps. I mean, I can't see us playing at home in an away kit, personally, against Charlton or, or Fortuna. Hold that thought, though. I, I feel like, like it might have been last season or the season before. I think we did in a pre-season friendly. Yeah, we did, didn't we? Who was it? Dark? I think was it was Dark. Or was it? it no, I think it was it Ipswich. Ipswich at the switch, den, I think. We played last season. I think Ooh. we played in our away kit because they'd only just released it. So based off that, I'd say nothing's off the table. We might we might not know until I mean on the opening day they're gonna wear blue. <laughs> we might not know we might not know for a while to be honest. When's the first time we're even going to possibly need the away kit? Well yeah, because yeah. Norwich is the second away game, isn't it? And that's they play in yellow, so we, we'll have no reason not to play in the home shirt again. So but who needs an away kit? Yeah, who exactly. needs one? Don't need to release it. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's um, yeah. I mean, well, if the if the away kit's like we said, then it's white with looks like mountains on it, and then obviously the third kit is red. Uh, the goal, it, it, the goalkeeper's kit, the away kit, and both the goalkeeper's kit looked as if they've been designed by the same person who designed some um, TFL um, seat covers for the for the tube map. So um, 
yeah, we'll wait and see on that one. So, uh, yeah. So, um, overall view, um, it's a no from me, Stephen, for the home shirt. Seven out of ten for me. I, I, I'll give it, I'll be kind, I'll give it a five out of ten. Dan? I'm going in the middle. I'm going for a six. Okay. Five, six, and seven then. Okay. So um, what's that? That's 18, isn't it? 18 points for that shirt out of 30. So, uh, yeah, stay with us and we'll see when the other shirts get get announced. Um, whether or not I can they imagine score the... Uh... Don't score. I can imagine the TFL the TFL show. I can weird. tell you what that's going to be. I might be single. I might be single digits. I reckon plus <laughs> three combined. No, that's it. Well, if you are listening to this, um, as you're listening to it as a podcast, get yourself onto um, onto Twitter and uh, and when this podcast gets released, and just let us know what you rate the new kit out of ten. If and if you're looking on YouTube. Just get involved in the comments right below and just give us a score out of ten. What you think the uh, the new home shirt? is about right we're going to move on to part two of the show where we're going to be talking um about signings or the lack of um and uh, yeah we will be back straight after this so then welcome back um part two um the lack of signings or Possibly because of what's happened recently, maybe. But um, it, is it is it time to get worried yet, or do you think we are come strong towards the uh, the later part of this? Obviously, we know that the youngsters, according to Richard Cowley yesterday, uh, even though they haven't been announced yet, um, but it looks as if Nana and um, Malachi and and or um, Joe Wright, I think Joe Wright was the other yeah, one as Joe well. Wright. And the other lad is um, potentially all signed. And obviously seeing um, the piece today on London News Online um, regarding that Gary is quite keen with his saying of the youngsters what have played a part currently in the first team training are potentially going to be um, given a chance unless they feel that a loan spell will work out better for him. But it looks as if he's quite confident on... Um, bedding in some of these youngsters this season? I think that's the right... I think, to answer your first question, I think it, it's possibly a little bit worrying that we're now getting to a stage where we've only really brought we've brought in two players. I know the youngsters have come in and will f- and fill in spaces. Um, the Obviously, the, the tragic news of, of John has, had obviously disrupted that and, and, and I think there may have been more um, activity had that obviously not had happened but it has and that's the that's the hand that the club have been have had to deal with um on the youngsters i think it's very telling that um adam malik and um adam malachi sorry and olaki were over in spain with yeah. um the first team squad and it's no coincidence. Obviously, I know we've since signed or, or Brian went out with them, but it was a left back and a centre half, two positions that all three of us and I'm sure the other pod panellists have said that they're positions that we really need to be looking at. Um, and so I don't think it's any coincidence that they've been they've been getting some some um, time with the first team. I also thought it was really interesting that um, Oleki, the, the centre half, I know it's any little thing, but he did the promo video, didn't he, on Mill TV and his partner was Sean Hutchinson club captain, big centre-half. It's no coincidence that he's clearly watching Hutchinson and, and wants to develop into a into a first-team centre-half. So I hope they do get a chance. I hope we see a lot more of them, um, not just you know, fleeting appearances, but ha- perhaps the, the Carabao Cup will be an opportunity to, to play them. Um, but I think now that we are sort of full steam ahead, shall we say, with, with James Berylson. I think um, you'll see a lot more, including perhaps a, a renewed interest in Zian Fleming. I think Burnley perhaps have respected us um, and respected the club over the last week or so and, and not not come in with an offer. But I would imagine that if they, if they are serious still, um, I think that might start to flare up as well. Yeah, thanks for that. You had to bring Fleming into the conversation after the last show we did, obviously, be, before uh, John sadly um, passed, where 
uh, a Burnley channel misquoted me. If you watch the clip back and actually listen to the clip, I do say rumour and I do say allegedly, um, yet they decided to ignore all that and go that I said it was a 100% a nailed on deal, which, you know, you know, yes, we can all find out information. Is it 100% all the time? It's 100% of what we're being told, but obviously we aren't the club. Um and we don't know what's what. But, yeah, um, thank you very much to that Burnley podcast. I'm not going to give you a name of who you are, um, but you do have, so I'm led to believe, a good habit of sensationalising um, comments um, for your own blow-up. And thank you very much for making me keep away from my phone for the whole weekend because it just would not stop. Uh, it was blowing up. Um, all over the place. So, um, yep, thank you very much. Um, thank you very much for all the new followers. <laughs> that was a benefit from it. Um, so, yeah, it, it, it was one of those. But, no, I think, it. you know, what will be will be. Um, I think, you know, we are rumoured to be looking at a few players. Um, it was interesting to see that, um, obviously, when we did the show, when we'd done the space the other week when the Dutch lad come on, and he said, to be fair to you, the um, Van Van Hoedonk, is it Van Hoedonk? Mm -hmm. Van Hoedonk was potentially too much money for us. And then it looks as if potentially his value has dropped a bit. I mean, I still think he's probably outside of our, you know, six, eight, ten million is probably outside of our um, spending capabilities right now. But it was interesting that he valued him fairly high, 12 million plus, and then all of a sudden now he's in the in the paper so that fee seems to have dropped right down for whatever reason i don't know but um yeah i think that i think there's a there's a few rumors of you know players we're looking at or, or areas where we're looking as in you know there's strong rumors around somewhere from belgium um so yeah it'll be interesting times ahead i think in, and we'll see you know what comes out over the next few days week um and longer, I think. I think the family are obviously in a week of mourning or whatever, and then we'll see what happens come um, next week. Probably get some announcements then, fingers crossed, because uh, we definitely need a couple um, of signings. Um, and yeah, I mean, there's rumour what please you two is that potentially there are clubs what are looking at long, or well, were looking at long. I think Wimbledon were looking at it but couldn't afford his wages, so I think they backed off now and signed the ex Sunderland keeper. Um, but, yeah, we seem to be top-heavy on keepers at the moment, don't we, in youth and, and in first team? We are top-heavy. I still don't think we have... I might, I might get pelters for this. I still don't think we have a number one that's good enough with, you know, I don't think Long's good enough and I think Bart's going to be incredibly rusty and at 36 he's now coming you know when we had him a few years ago playing well he was in his prime coming out of that now um obviously the main goalkeeper link has been uh in, in kind of in the past week and a half has been mark travers um from bournemouth who for me would be a phenomenal upgrade on both long and bielkowski um the fact that there's still talk of that deal going on rather than him you know he has been linked to other clubs i know Hull is someone that are interested in him he hasn't moved to anyone yet whether that's a case of he's staying loyal to us because we was in talks or whether that's because bournemouth are waiting to get the green light because they need to bring a goalkeeper in before he can go i don't know just the fact he hasn't signed for someone is giving me a little bit of hope um and just overall on the lack of signings if what had if we you know if I'll try that again. Um, if, you know, John Berylson was still our owner, um, maybe I would be more concerned than I am now because of what's happened. I'm not panicking too much. Um, kind of maybe in the next two weeks, if nothing's happening and there isn't really any names kind of floating about, um, then I think that's when I might start to, you know, sound the panic bell. Yeah, no, Just I'll to touch that, on that. Sorry, just to touch on what you said, Dan. Bournemouth have actually signed a keeper um, this summer. They signed a guy from Germany. So they have strengthened in that area. Okay. So perhaps... Um, I've read they were looking at bringing in Carl Darlow. Uh, that, I think that's 
to number two. They bought in a number one, and I think from uh, the guy oh, from Germany, because I looked earlier, um, I can't think of his name. I think it's a Dutch keeper, but um, yeah, I, I think I think perhaps it, 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 that's one that really is close or is potentially close, and they're just either they're waiting for something or we're waiting for long to go, and and then that will that will happen. I think. Yeah, no, uh, uh, yeah. I wonder where Long will go. I mean, I don't even know where Bart would go, really. Would Bart end up going back to um, Ipswich, maybe, as goalkeeping coach or something? I don't know. Bart is, I think Bart is at the stage of his career now, and I, again, probably get some pelters for this. Um, I, as good as he's been for us and as good as he, we know he is, you know, shot-stopping, I don't think there'll be many teams in the championship that would perhaps look at him and go, right, he's going to be an out and out number one goalkeeper. Um, I think for a, a number two, he is phenomenal. And I think that's why the talk is more of long going than, than Bart, because Bart is, would be, it would be great to have him as, as a number two, if he's happy to, to do that. If he drops down the leagues, of course, he, you know, drops to maybe to league one or league two, he'd, he'd walk into most sides, but um, I think it's more long, and again, who knows if anyone's been watching George Long over the last um, over the last six months, um, it might take a little bit of persuading for uh, for someone to want to sign him. But uh, who, who knows? <laughs> if he... Sorry, yeah, I I'm know, laughing because that say. <laughs> I know <laughs> that tweet the other day. Um, the the England blind football team um, <laughs> squad was announced. And I love Millwall fan banter. It's just the best in the world. I don't think anyone can ever top um, when Millwall fans are on form. And someone said, absolutely gutted for George Long. He's, um, he's made such improvements this year. And it was nailed on that he should have got selected to the club, um, selected for the team. And uh, unfortunately, he didn't. So, you know, my I'm absolutely gutted for him. And I'm just thinking, you know, that's just the level of our... Um, our banner for fans, but he could come back this season and be absolutely blinding, couldn't he? I, I would love nothing more than for him to prove every single one of us wrong. But realistically, it didn't happen for Jordan Archer those all those years ago. I don't think it's happening again. <laughs> yeah, no, I, 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 I get that. Well, let's let's um. Have you got anything else you want to say, Dan? On the um on the signings or, or keepers or anything before we move on to the um, the the bits and pieces what have been coming out today with Dirty Leeds? Um, I'll, I'll quickly, no, no. Uh, I'll quickly no touch on, on some of the um, on some of the youngsters quickly. Um, you know, I think it's Go great on. that, you know, they're, they're kind of in and around the squad. Um, you know, the, the question mark obviously is can they come in and make an impact in our squad you know we we know we have a small squad we don't want too many passengers you know we, we're gonna have you know players that might not play as much or whatnot but we can't really afford to have players like that so you know especially if you're looking at the young lads um Akaloi, um particularly if we're gonna play three center halves you got hutchinson that's quite injury prone you got leonard that's quite injury prone um who knows what's going to happen with Alex Mitchell as well. Obviously, he's been out in Spain with the first team. Um, but, you know, if, if he wants to keep kind of them them four and Hutchinson and Leonard get injured, which they're prone to do, then all of a sudden, Okoloy might be finding himself playing. Um, his, own, his only experience, I think, of men's football was, uh, I think he had a loan spell at Torquay last season. Um, so I maybe wouldn't be opposed if we, you know, if we maybe brought someone in on a season-long loan, um, which could maybe enable him to go out on a season-long loan. I wouldn't be overly upset about that. I think it might be kind of a good thing for everyone. And I think you might kind of see it in the next few weeks. You know, and obviously a lot of Premier League teams are going to be going on their big swanky foreign tours, but then they're going to come back. And as the window ticks on, they're going to bring players in and that might just start to filter down the leagues a little bit and you might kind of get players that become available right at the end of the window. Um, I know Gary Rowett, since he's been with us, he's actually made quite a few deadline day signings. The joke of Millwall not making any deadline day signings might start to be going out the window all of a sudden. Yeah, no, definitely. Especially with some of the, uh, with some of these premiership youngsters what need to get some, you know, games. Um, you know, Pep, don't forget, 
you owe us for uh, letting you use the den that time. I might as well say it. Every other fucker seems to say it at some point in the in the season, doesn't it? You owe us. So, um, yeah. Yeah, and, we'll have, and I think we'll Gary Rout, Yeah, and I think Gary... <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think Gary... To be fair, I think Gary Rout is quite, quite um, widely respected within the footballing world. Um, and I think he's got quite a good contact mm. knowledge, isn't he? So, um, so yeah. Um, I'm debating now, for the last part of the show, to... Talk about dirty leads, their prices, what they're looking to charge away fans this season, and some other clubs. What seem to be, you know, high Coventry around thirty-five quid, Norwich thirty-one, Leeds are, are nearly fifty. Um, some ridiculous pricing, or do we talk about the potential that we're going to a back five this season? Your, you boys, what, what would you? Would you like to finish the show on moaning about robbing bastards um, being other clubs? Or do you think there's more, more leg room in possibly discussing the back five potential route? Or should we save the back five for another show? Or should we save the ticket prices for another show? What, what, your choice, boys. We've got 10 minutes left. What way would you want to go? I think we should stick to Millwall. I think we should stick to us and perhaps what we're doing. All I'm going to say is I just hope that Leeds charge their supporters the earth for the season and they don't get promoted. That's all I'm going to say on yeah. that. Yeah, I don't we'll start my own ticket let's... prices when the season starts. <laughs> there we go. There we go. And we're hammering on the days. Right. So, then, gents, the first pre-season game as such was uh, behind closed doors against Bromley. Uh, it looked a very emotional game with Alan Dunn laying a reef on behalf of Bromley. Um or laying some flowers. Um, but it looks as if we played a back five. Um, and it looks as if we played two full teams either side of the break. Um, what's your thoughts on that? Have you got the team in front of you as well? Or I'll, gra- I can I'll, grab I can it up. It. I'll grab it up quickly now. Go on then. So, uh, yeah, Stephen, you start why he's doing that. Um, Not I, I think... <laughs> Yeah, this is this is we've we've descended into chaos now. Um, I think we all knew that Gary Rowett probably wanted to go back to a back five. We said it so many times. He was forced into the change last year to the four um, and to change the way that we played. And fair enough, he did it, and it it almost got us over the line. Um, I think I don't think there's anything wrong with a back five, providing that you've got the right players in the positions that really matter. And when I say that, I think the wing backs are crucial and to sign Joe Bryan I think that is a that really does strengthen um the, the left hand side um I think it really it's important that the players in the middle um you know we're not going to have wingers as such it's it's wing back so the players in the middle are going to have to take their opportunity when they get on the ball Fleming if he's there SA um Honeyman what more looks to be playing in in more of a central role behind the strikers you're not going to find that they're going to go out wide they need to be creating things from the middle so it's important that if we do go to that to that route the right players are playing um in the system but look i think it's rowett's preferred way of playing i think he's built a lot of success on five at the ball three at the back if you will three center halves and wing backs so he just needs to get the players right last year he didn't this year he really has to that you got the players? What what were the yes, two halves? So, um this this is just um how I've seen it uh, lined up in social media. So yeah, um in in goal for the first for the first half. We'll we'll focus on the first half first. So Long was in goal. He's got Honeyman lined up at right wing back with Hutchinson, Cooper, and Okoloy as your three centre halves. Brian at left wing back, and then SA and Savile just in front of the uh defence. Fleming just in front of them, and then Vogel, Sammer, and Bradshaw as the striking partnership. It's quite a strong lineup, isn't it? Sounds quite attacking as well to have Sa sitting in just in front of your um, defence. I wouldn't have him down as a player like that. I'd have him obviously down mm. as a winger, maybe a number ten. I certainly wouldn't have him down as a centre mid. But that, that's that kind of sounds, you know. But he's definitely he's definitely got the pace, though, isn't he? Yeah, to get up and down. And one, also, obviously, another interesting thing that's caught my eye, particularly about this lineup, is Honeyman at right wing back, which I saw that first time round, and I just looked at him for what, what on earth. And then I thought back to it, and I was like, actually, you know what? 
I don't mind it all of a sudden. He's got the stamina. He's he's pretty quick, you know. For he's he's not he's not the quickest player, but you know he's got a bit of pace. He yeah. can get up and down quite well. He's played in centre mid. He's an incredibly well-rounded player, and you know, being a natural midfielder who's played on the wing, he might be quite an attacking outlet for us down the right hand side if it's something Rowett does want to pursue. Yeah, no, hundred percent, Stephen. I can't. I'm gonna to have to go against you there, Dan. I, I don't think we can have. Um, I don't think we can have George Honeyman as a as a right wing back. Um, I think that's a position that perhaps that's telling that that's somewhere where we're going to strengthen because Danny McNamara is is the clear is the clear choice for for that position. But if you want a backup, I don't think your backup can be George Honeyman. Um, touching on SA in the middle. The only issue I have with this five five at the back and the wing backs is the development of Romain SA because if Fleming stays, Fleming is going to be the man that's just behind the front two. There's no questions asked. That is how it's going to be. So are we just going to try and get SA in at centre mid just to play him? Or, you know, does that mean we're not going to see Billy Mitchell and Savile together? I, I, I don't know, but... That's the only concern that I have with it. But SA certainly has the ability. He's good on the ball. He can get up and down. So he perhaps could play in that position. But I don't know if that would be the best way to get the best out of him. I think I'm with you on that one. Yeah, I think I'm with you on that. So come on and give us a second half lineup. Where when where were all the goals scored? First or second half? So I was about to say, I'm just going to recap on the scores quickly. We actually went 1-0 down on the first half. Um, and then Long in goal. Was, yep. Um, and then... Vogel Samar scored and then Bradshaw um, put us 2-1 up. And then second half, so it was still the 5-2-3 with Bart starting in goal, then Danny Mack, back three centre-halves of Leonard, Alex Mitchell, Murray Wallace. Uh, at left wing back was Adam Malachi and then Evans and Mitchell sitting in just in front. What more? kind of in that number 10 role and then Imakyu and Kevin Nisbet up top. Um, it was Adam Adam Malachi with the third, Watmore made it four, uh, Nisbet with the fifth, and then Immacu with the sixth. I know a couple of the goals have been posted by the club onto Twitter. Yeah, so again, a a very attacking lineup for the second half, which looked as if it got more results, and it will please the Bart versus Long debaters on social media all season, but it looked as if Bart produced a clean sheet for the second half, um, as in Long let one in on the first half. We haven't seen their goal, so we don't know. Believe it or Long not, to, to I was going to say, believe it or not, I did see a quote um, that it was a defensive uh, mistake that led to uh, Bromley's goal. Now, that doesn't necessarily get defensive. defensive. Yeah, they are. They are. But I, you would say a, a goal, a goalkeeping error. So perhaps, and I can't believe I'm saying this. Maybe George Long wasn't at fault for the goal, and it's just coincidental that he was the keeper when we conceded. Again, tomorrow I think it'll be very similar against Gillingham. You'll see two different sides, or at least I, a lot I, of subs. I do think. Um, he he will. I, I don't think, I think he might do two different 11s. I certainly don't think he'll go with the two 11s that play together. I think he'll probably want to give Nisbet and Bradshaw a go up top together, mm. maybe mm -hmm. with Fleming in behind. Um, you know, it's pre-season. You try not to take too much um, results-wise into account, not, not massively, you know. Gillingham, they, they've been in their pre-season now for a, for a couple of weeks. They've played, they played a competitive game against... Uh, Como FC in the week um, and one, you know, I, I don't know kind of what standard they're at. So I still think at this stage of pre-season, it's more about getting minutes into the legs. I think, you know, the Fortuna game, you're probably kind of looking at that to go, right, where are we at performance wise? And, you know, I, I don't mm. know how easy it is to measure us up to a kind of a mid table where a visa side in terms of quality. No, I yeah, think, I think the, the other thing is, is it's the important one. So, I think yeah. the Charlton one is the. It, I think the Charlton one more so because I think that's one that Rowett, even though it's a friendly, he's not going to want to lose that game because of of who it is. And I think it. it's no, it's really important because that they've actually penciled that in 
I think I think it's really important to play Charlton because that's going that will be the level that we, you'll see just where yeah. we're at. In that they do always because... say the most meaningful friendlies are against the teams that are kind of one league above or below you, or in the very mm. rare occasion you play a team in the same league of you, the same league as you in a friendly. Mm. It's and it's Charlton. I'm not even it? gonna go. Yeah, I'm not even gonna go on to the the numbers or anything else about it because I don't want to jinx it. But we need to win it. Uh, for bragging rights and and that's it. Listen, if you are watching, drop us um, drop us a message across the socials or get involved in the comments. Let us know what you think your starting eleven um, would be tomorrow. Or if you're watching it after the game, um, what you thought was the probably the best. Uh, what would be your best starting eleven um, going forward through the preseason? Um, we've still got a little while before the season. Um, proper kicks in so want to keep it under 60 minutes gents um Stephen start with you any final words no just um to echo what you said earlier if anyone's listening um if you can give us a rating for the kit in the comments um on youtube we do look at them all we do speak about it so we do make sure that the comments um are read and we do appreciate some of the funny ones that we see we, that give us a little bit of a chuckle in our in our group um and as as i'm sure dan obviously i think dan's going tomorrow um it's great to be back um really with with some meal to talk about i know friendlies are not quite the same but it's still a game of football and i still want to see us on the right side of a result i'll get that i'll get that so yeah go on then um dan any final words yeah i'm going to pre-field tomorrow um looking forward to being back you know you can't be here i think there's i think um, i saw earlier today we we're taking um around two thousand fans just over and they've actually gilliam said today they've they've sold around four thousand tickets uh for the game tomorrow so it sounds like there's going to be around about half of uh half the attendance tomorrow is going to be millwall fans so you know it's going to be great to be back uh, i'm looking forward to it and you know hopefully we start to see a few encouraging signs and you know hopefully um, James can pull off um, a couple of coops in the transfer market to get us even more excited for the the big kickoff on August fifth. Absolutely, absolutely. So then, that's it from us for another episode. We'll be back on Monday uh, discussing the result at Gillingham. Uh, hopefully, we get uh, a victory um, for James' first game in charge. Follow us across social media. And that is it from us. Uh, follow us across social medias. Make sure, if you're watching on YouTube, to give us a like, subscribe. And uh, if you're following us on your chosen podcast provider, make sure you give us a follow um, there as well. So, yeah, that's it. Thanks very much. We'll see you again soon. Um, come on, the wall. <laughs>